All right, so with alkenes, they undergo um, a number of different reactions, but the, the main reaction we can all, uh, we can classify it as, as, is an addition reaction. So within addition reaction, there's going to be hydrogenation reactions, hydration reactions, halogenation, hydrohalogenation. There's a whole different class of reactions that are all classified under um, addition reactions. So we're going to talk about how the addition reactions work in general. Um, we're going to look through a couple, work through a couple examples of how they work. Um, and then you should be able to apply those to basically any type of reaction with the alkenes. Um, and it's actually pretty simple um, in what you're going to do here. So the idea here is with an alkene, you have a carbon-carbon double bond, and it's going to react with something. And here it's just generically written as X and Y. And the way I, I describe this is you take the double bond and you break the double bond and you draw two new bonds. So in other words, here is your carbon-carbon double bond, right, that has the other bonds to it. And what you're going to do is break the double bond. So the reason I'm writing is, again, is so I can use my eraser. We're going to break the double bond. And if you remember, a, a bond, that bond between those two carbons is two electrons, right? A bond is really two electrons being shared. And so basically, we're going to put one bond over here and one bond over there. And remember, carbon has four electrons to share. So in each of those, um, whenever that bond is broken, each of those carbons is going to take its own electron, and then it's going to share it with the other thing. So here we're gonna break the bond between X and Y, and X is gonna come over here, and Y is gonna come over here. And basically X brings one electron over and it's gonna share it with the one carbon, Y brings an electron over, it's gonna share it with the other carbon, and it makes two, two bonds. Notice that in mine down here, it's drawn slightly differently than the one up here. In my case, I have the X and Y off to the left and right, on the one that um, was preloaded onto that slide, the X and Y are down. It does not matter where you draw those around the individual carbons. Um, so one can be left, one can be right, you can draw it up, down, it doesn't matter. Because whenever you have single bonds between the carbons, they're undergoing free rotation so they can move around. Okay. So as I mentioned, one uh, common type of an addition reaction is called a hydrogenation reaction. Um, in, the, in a hydrogenation reaction, usually you'll find it's done in the presence of a metal catalyst. Um, in this case, it's uh, typically palladium or PD. A catalyst, if you recall from earlier in the semester, is something that um, is used to speed up a chemical reaction. However, it's not used in the chemical reaction, it's just there. Um, and it speeds up the reaction by lowering the activation energy, but it doesn't get used. So usually you'll write it like either right below the um, arrow, like it's shown there. Sometimes you'll see it written as like PD, like right on or right above the arrow. But if it's shown on the arrow, that means it's a catalyst. It's used for the reaction to occur, but it doesn't get used within the reaction itself. All right, so in this case, in this hydrogenation reaction, notice, again, we're breaking the double bond, right? You break this double bond here. You, now you have a single bond. We draw the two new bonds. And now, in this case, the two new bonds go to H and H, and we actually end up with um, the H's on either side. All right, so again, this is how our... Uh, hydrogenation reaction is going to work. At the bottom here it says the product of a hydrogenation reaction is going to be an alkane, right? Because you're losing the alkene, which is the double bond, and you're making an alkane, which is a single bond. All right, so here is a sample problem. If one butene is mixed with hydrogen gas in the presence of a catalyst, what would form? So the first thing is, is to draw one butene. So butene that's four carbons. One butene means you have a double bond between carbons one and two, right? Um, and it's going to react with hydrogen gas in the presence of a catalyst, palladium, what is going to form. So it's, 
it's correct as it's written with a skeletal structure. I want to go through and write it a different way as well. Um, CH2, right? So where the double bond starts, that's a CH2, because remember, every carbon has four bonds. Two of them are involved in the double bond. Um, and then two, the two others are going to be hydrogen. And actually, now that let's actually write this out as a complete structure showing all the bonds. So let's do carbon double bonded and it's going to have a hydrogen and it's going to have a hydrogen and then it's going to be double bonded to a carbon. That carbon is only going to have one bond to a hydrogen and then the other bond is going to go to another CH2 and then it's going to be bound to a CH3. And I'm not drawing out all of those other um, hydrogens on that CH2 and CH3 at the end because they're not going to be involved in the chemical reaction at all. Um, so this is going to react with H2 and it's going to form in the presence of a catalyst what? Um, so what I'm going to do instead of drawing out the product, I am just going to use my tools here and kind of show you what the product would be. So again, in this reaction, you're going to break the double bond. So we're going to break the double bond right there. And then we're going to draw two new bonds on the carbons that were involved in the double bond. So notice, once I break the double bond, I have two carbons that only have uh, three bonds each. So right, this carbon and that carbon now only have three bonds each, and we know that they need to have four carbons. So we're going to draw a new bond there, and we're going to draw a new bond there. All right, so what goes on to those bonds? Well, that's where this H2 comes in. Right? That's what we're reacting it with. So H2, we can think of it as two different H's. So one H is going to go here, and the other H is going to go down there. And that would actually be your product. So we could actually write that um, as CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. CH3, I'm going to write CH2 in parentheses 2 just to save a little room. 3. So again, multiple ways you can write this. Don't forget the um, using your skeletal structures, complete structures, condensed structures. It doesn't change what the molecule is, and you should be able to see it different ways. So similarly, if we go back up top, um, that reaction, another way to write that product would just be as a skeletal structure, which would look like that. You break the double bond, you draw two new bonds, and new bonds go to hydrogens. Those don't show up. On a skeletal structure. So this structure and that one and that one are all the same at this point, right? Because in this case, we have a CH3 group right there. We have a CH2 group there, a CH2, and a CH3. All right. So again, that's how you would do a hydrogenation reaction. Now, a hydration reaction is very, very similar, except in a hydration reaction, instead of it being H2 to start with, now you have water, which is H2O. And instead of writing H2O, I always suggest you write this as H bonded to OH, because what's going to happen is you're going to break that bond, and an H is going to go to one spot, and the OH is going to go to the other. So by writing it as H and OH, it's a lot easier to kind of see the two pieces and to know where they go. Um, a hydration reaction like this is going to require a strong acid like H2SO4, sulfuric acid, or HCl, hydrochloric acid. Um, again, those are catalysts. They're not involved in the reaction themselves, but they're required for that reaction to be able to proceed. Um, so here's an example of a hydration reaction. So um, you have CH2 double bonded to a CH2, so that's ethylene. And again, I'm going to draw it out on the bottom myself so I can do my magic erasing. All right, um, so now what we're gonna do here is we're going to break the double bond, and we're going to draw two new bonds. So a new bond 
there and a new bond there. All right, the H goes to one spot and the OH goes to the other spot. And that would be your product, CH3, CH2, OH. So another way to write that would be CH3, and then CH2 with an OH attached to it. So again, multiple ways you can actually write this structure. Um, one question I often get here is, does it matter if the OH goes to that spot or to that spot? And the answer is, Sometimes it does, and usually it doesn't. Um, I shouldn't say usually it doesn't. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on your starting material. So there is a rule that I want you guys to know. I'm going to erase this to give myself a little more room here. Um, that is called Markovnikov's rule. Mar Markovnikov's rule. Whoops. So Markovnikov's rule basically says that in a hydration reaction or in a uh, hydrohalogenation reaction, which I'll talk about in just a minute, um, hydrogen goes to the carbon that has the most hydrogens already bound to it. I like to say it hydrogen goes with its friends. So in this case, if we were looking at ethylene, which this does not, Markovnikov's rule does not apply, you would say that carbon, I'm going to label these as carbon one and carbon two. Carbon one has two hydrogens attached to it, and carbon two has two hydrogens attached to it. So both of them have the same number of hydrogens attached, so it doesn't matter where it would go. However, let's make up a different structure that is going to be carbon to carbon, and this one's going to have a CH3 up here and an H down here, and this one's going to have an H and an H. So now, if we were to do the same reaction where that one reacts with water in the presence of sulfuric acid, what would happen? Well, we would break the double bond, and we're going to form two new bonds. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to break the double bond, and we're going to form two new bonds. So now we have to figure out where the hydrogen goes. So where the hydrogen is going to go somewhere, and the OH is going to go somewhere. Well, according to Markovnikov's rule, Hydrogen goes to the carbon that has the most hydrogens already bound to it, or hydrogen goes with its friends. This, let's label them carbon one and carbon two again. Carbon two has two hydrogens, carbon one only has one. Hydrogen goes with its friends. So hydrogen is going to come down here and go there, and that leaves the OH going to this carbon, and you would have your OH over there. So again, that is Markovnikov's rule, and that's something that you should know for um, hydration reactions, um, as well as reactions that are called these hydrohalogenations. So hydrohalogenations are when you do the same type of addition reaction, where you break the double bond and draw two new bonds, and it occurs with like HCl or HBr. So basically these, the H is going to go to one carbon, the Cl is going to go to another. The H is going to go to one carbon. The Br is going to go to another. So that would be a hydrohalogenation. It's just like H2O, where right for H2O, you would have an H and an OH. But in this case, instead of writing an OH in the second spot, you would write one of the halogens. Um, a regular halogenation reaction, usually with chlorine or bromine, is just like a hydration reaction, or sorry, a hydrogenation reaction where you add hydrogen. Instead of it being H2, in this case, you have Cl2 or Br2. Um, in these reactions, it doesn't matter where you draw uh, the chlorine because you're putting the same chlorine on both uh, carbons, right? So you can't say like chlorine one goes with its friends because they're both chlorines that you're splitting up. So again, these are the series of reactions uh, you need to know with alkenes. These are addition reactions. 
you break a double bond and you draw two new bonds and don't forget that if you are splitting up an H and an OH or an H and a CL or an H and any other halogen, the hydrogen always goes with its friends.